play this is part three of the chords of Van Halen and I've actually featured Eddie Van Halen more than any other guitarist or band on my channel there's technically nine episodes or lessons related to Eddie and that's three for all and breaking chords and scales and tails and rant videos and there's technically three episodes of chord play so far this is technically the fourth episode of chord play there's the original Van Halen chord play episode from a few years ago there's part two which features you know some of Sammy Hagar's era and then also the Eddie Van Halen uh, Sus Chord Magic from about a year or two ago. And this is technically the fourth episode of Chord Play surrounding Edward Van Halen. And I could like, seriously continue to make more episodes. He's like a fountain of information and inspiration. And definitely, you know, his lead and soloing style is very influential. But so is his rhythm work and his chord vocabulary. is very inspiring and magical. You know, he's just a great guitarist all the way around and sorely missed for sure. So with this episode, I'm attempting to do a deep dive with Van Halen, and that's really hard to do because all of their albums and all of their music is very well known, but there are some kind of hidden gems and some songs that kind of fell in the cracks out there. But this kind of brings up an interesting thing, and I literally went through their entire catalog in preparation for this episode, and that's you know, a really common question, but what's your favorite Van Halen album? So putting the material together for this episode, I came across their old Zero Demos album, which I think that was released like in the mid-90s. Um, never officially, it was always bootleg. But that contained all their demos from 1976 and 1977, including some of the songs they recorded, you know, with Gene Simmons before, uh, you know, before they actually, you know, got the record deal with Warner Brothers and became Van Halen. But it's like those early years. And it's really interesting to go back and listen to that Zero Demo album because there's early versions of Somebody Get Me a Doctor and On Fire and House of Pain and all these different songs. And a lot of people forget like, you know, that that exists, even though it's not an official release. But it's really cool to hear that bubbling, brewing early Van Halen on that Zero Demos album. So the music and ideas featured in this episode came from five different Van Halen albums, and two of those albums are interlinked or related, the American version of Balance and also the Japanese release of Balance. That was in 1995. Um, and then just kind of an assortment of different, you know, albums and different music, the Twister soundtrack and stuff like that. So, you know, some songs that I noticed that people really either have forgotten or they really aren't talking about that much, but there's some great chord work, you know, hiding in this episode. Even though none of these songs really were hits, necessarily. Maybe one of them was a minor hit. But, you know, not like Jump or Panama or Hot for Teacher or whatever. Not the, the typical Van Halen. This is kind of more the hidden Van Halen, but there's some really cool stuff in this episode. Here we go. The opening, that's the song Aftershock from the album Balance. And that's definitely one of my favorite Sammy Hagar era Van Halen songs. It totally rocks. Like this. <laughs>
like that. So it's really cool. And it starts with these tapped harmonics. It kind of reminds me of Spanish Fly a little bit. But he's playing with uh, E minor. And then E, uh, e flat 5. E minor flat 5 right there. Like that. So lower that B to B flat right there and tap it. Like that. So you're literally just tapping a mirror, you know, uh, above, like an octave above. Kind of mirror tapping right there with harmonics. a harmonic there on the 12th fret on the B and the high E. Just kind of let that ring like that. And do it again. And then this really sinister riff, I think he kicks on a uh, flanger right there, but he's doing... Um something like this. And that literally sounds exactly like what he did. And he's doing this weird kind of like slight pinch, slight bending. And it gives it this really unstable, weird sound. D power chord to an A sus 2. And then you hear this, it kind of reminds me of the Who. So you're basically grabbing um, this E power chord right there. And you know, I've seen it written like E minor, but I'm not hearing that open G. I think it's just the low E, two fretted notes, and the B and the high E open like that. And Eddie did that a lot, where he would, it looked like he's playing E minor, but he's actually muting that G string. Getting that huge E5 power chord right there. You're gonna do that little single note. And that partial G5, D5 to A again. switches to that A sus 2 and you do that same riff. And with that A5 right there and then that G D to A. Back to E again. Right there, that's really tasty. Uh, C major 7 right there. And then back to that A sus 2. And then a D5 and just start mashing that open D string. And then that G, D, A and finish with the E, uh, E5. That sets you up for the verse right there. Check out Aftershock. That song rocks. Next up is the song Balakatherium. And this is also from the album Balance. And this is a rare Van Halen instrumental. Which Eddie took solos and performed solos on Van Halen albums. But the band rarely ever took an instrumental like this. We're in drop D. It's really cool, like this. Something like that, so we're in drop D tuning. And you definitely hear Eddie just pummeling uh, this D5, but it's spread out really weird because we're in drop D, so he's playing the low E, which is tuned to D, and he's also grabbing this higher A right there, so you're hearing this really low D mixed with a higher A. Something 
like that. Mm -hmm. So he's just riffing right there, and then he's actually sneaking down and grabbing a little piece of E major, and Eddie did this kind of stuff all the time. So it's distinctly in D. But he keeps mixing like this E, you know, with that D, like an E over D kind of flavor. He did that all the time. down that E triad. So he's kind of bouncing off that uh, D to that open A, then that uh, F sharp to the open D, and then he's bending D to E, so he's still flirting with E. And that B to C sharp. And right there you're doing these hammer-ons, uh, the, the low D open. First, and then last time it's uh, something like that. But check out Bach Ethereum, that's a great song, and Eddie is just ripping all over the place on that one. Here comes an obscure one. This is Crossing Over, which is an unreleased track from the Balance Sessions. It was actually released in Japan, I think, in the Japanese version of Balance, but it was never released in America. I think it might have been the B side to the Can't Stand Loving You single. But uh, this is a really cool, dark Van Halen song. I wish they would have, you know, written more songs like this. In the intro, Eddie's really just tapping between two chords, and we're still in drop D. But it's something like this. and then you hear uh, octaves eventually like this. So that was a C to an F and then C to E to D octaves. And at the end when you get to that D, then play a massive D sus2 right there with the low E tuned to D open. And then this D, E, F, A to G octave. C sus2 right there. Let that ring. Then do that first octave series again. Back to that D sus2. And the second time you're doing uh, D to E, B flat, A to G octaves right there. And then end on that C sus2 again. And then you hear this dark heavy groove, and it's Michael Anthony hitting that low D, and then Eddie's kind of playing with D sus2 and uh, C sus2 again, like this. And right there, Eddie does such a cool uh, fill right there at the end of that C sus2. So right there, you're sliding that uh, D to E. Grab this F, and then he does a tapped harmonic right there, and then he's going to slide that up to A as a harmonic, like that. You know, such a cool fill. Eventually it starts doing this. That's really cool too. So that's like an F right there because we're in drop D. And then he's also kind of playing with that A and B flat right there. It reminds me of the melody from Love Walks In, just a little bit. So 
check out Crossing Over, because I really wasn't that familiar with it. And then putting this episode together, I remembered it. And I was like, oh yeah, the Dark Van Halen song. So cool. Next up is the song Can't Get This Stuff No More, and this came from the Van Halen Greatest Hits Volume 1. It was one of those new songs they added to that package. And we're still in drop D tuning, and this is after the extended uh, intro part, and it has this classic kind of Van Halen riff, and also the chorus part, too, we're going to look at. Great, you know, rhythm part in the chorus, too. But the first part's something like this. <laughs> Once again, kind of like what in uh, some of the other examples, Eddie's playing, you know, this D root note, the low E, but he's also playing around with E, so like E over D. He loves that flavor. <laughs> It's the low E open, and then this partial D to partial E, and then he's just pummeling back and forth between that E and the dropped D right there. And like a you know a little piece of E sus four right there. Back to that D, and then it's like a little piece of D sus two, and you're kind of like sliding back into that partial D. partial E and then a giant A5 power chord right there and it moves in the verse and then the chorus part is really cool like this part Sus2, I guess. You got that open G in there, too. It's like a C over G, because we're in drop D right there, and then A minor. And I love that walk down, you know, back to that F. Right there, you just kind of playing with those fourths, and then do it again. It's definitely worth you know, revisiting if you haven't heard that in a while. Great, you know, Van Halen song. And Eddie's rhythm work in that tune is exceptional. Great stuff. Next up is Human's Being. This came from the Twister soundtrack, and this kind of signaled the end of Sammy Hagar's you know, time with the band. I think this, was this the last song they recorded with Sammy? I think it was. But they had some issues, you know, during the sessions. This is really cool. So we're tuned down a half step, and Human's Being is something like this. <laughs> starting with this, like E minor, and a part of a G to A. And then you distinctly hear this little piece of C. And then you hear this D9, um, what, D9 at 11 right there. And one of my favorite chords right there. Right. And he's not really grabbing the root there, he's doing... E minor 
minor G A thing. And the last time you distinctly hear this, just think E major up a fret. And then you distinctly hear that riff again, distorted like this. Partial G to partial A, bouncing off the low E. And still that C to that D9 at 11 again. least is the song Big Trouble and this appears on the Zero Demos album that was released. Not officially, that's a bootleg album, but definitely, you know, classic kind of rare Van Halen, you know, songs exist right there. And this song actually was re-recorded on a different kind of truth as Big River. I think to minimize confusion because David Lee Roth did have a song on Eat Him and Smile called Big Trouble, but way back in the day, back in 1976, Van Halen had a song called Big Trouble and this totally just captures that raw, early Van Halen sound. And no offense to Big River, which is a good cover of their own song, but I prefer the old 76 demo, like this. you have this finger picked almost classical sounding part so like an E minor 7 a little part of D and then C sus 2 right there and then and Eddie kept that part you know when they changed it to Big River he kept that same little intro right there totally have this classic old-school Van Halen riff like this. Lots of slides, too. inversions right there, like a G over A to D over A. And you hear this little single note riff. It's kind of a weird riff because it's, you know, C, B to G and end on that A. That's what I'm hearing. He did change that ever so slightly on Big River, but the original Big Trouble Oh, fill or whatever is like that. And then repeat that first part, that G to D over A. In the verse, it's like a C over D to D right there. the interlude and they did capture this in the re-recording on a different kind of truth 
But I love the original demo because Eddie kind of hit this interlude a little differently. And then the solo was brilliant, like the way he opened it and targeted over these chords. But it does have like a little bit of still of the night, like White Snake flavor. I doubt White Snake copied this from Van Halen. It's just similar. Um, like a whole decade before White Snake recorded Still of the Night, but something like this. <laughs> aggressive E in the beginning. I'm just kind of playing with that E octave right there. You can do that four times in a row and then you hear a progression of those octaves. E to C and then G to B. And that's so cool. doing in his original solo he didn't do this on big river he only did it in big trouble but he targeted over that chord progression implied chord progression in such a tasty way like this <laughs> But such a great opening for that solo and targeting over the chord progression, which you have to think of how old Eddie was. Was he even 20 years old when he recorded this? I mean, that's really impressive, like this. And it's matching that chord progression, E to C, G to B, because there's E minor right there. A little piece of C doing this really typical bend in G and then targets B7 right there. so cool you know something like this keeps going right there and stuff but uh, I loved you know hearing that and remembering like wow man Eddie was on fire and he was just a kid you know he was just getting started all right that's gonna wrap this episode of chord play with part three of the chords of Van Halen and definitely I'm a massive Van Halen fan Eddie's the entire reason I started playing guitar and I was devastated you know when he passed away a few years ago it was really hard to kind of just understand and make it through that time but I'm definitely you know attempting to keep his music and his memory and his ideas alive and you know whether it's albums and old photographs and memorabilia you know in my stash and old guitar magazines and interviews and stuff like that just remembering and returning to his music and his legacy and i had a pack of eddie van halen uh, picks and i forgot to open these i was going to open them on camera and use them totally spaced that but uh anyway definitely a huge van halen fan sitting right here and this is the fourth episode of Chord Play, you know, featuring Van Halen's, you know, chord style and rhythm work. And I could make dozens more. I mean, he literally is just a waterfall of inspiration and ideas and, you know, his lead, you know, guitar work and his soloing and fills and all that stuff, tapping and harmonics and all that was very inspiring. But I really love his chords and rhythm work. You know, his rhythm playing was just exceptional on top of everything else that he could do and he did. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. And rest in peace, Edward Van Halen. Thank you.